Uh, hi, and welcome back, Super Nerd Friends. It is Saturday, and I am your host, Haley. Uh, Alexis, I just want to start off by saying I love to read part of your novel. In fact, I would probably prefer it to you just talking about it. Um, you know, because it's a little bit more the full package, I guess. But uh, I don't think it counts, because it's not really communication for the sake of communication. It's just you sharing a project which happens to be composed of written symbols. So, uh, yeah, please send that and let us know what kind of feedback you're looking for. Um, also, I'm really proud of you for that long shift at Domino's. That's tough, but you're working hard and uh, getting paid for it, which is really great. Uh, <laughs> um, I haven't heard back from the library yet. I will be calling them back by my next video on Wednesday. Uh, if I haven't heard from them, just to, uh, uh, just to make sure. There's always, you know, oil industry work. If not, there's like a nose, throat, and ear doctor who needs an assistant, or not, a, not an actual assistant, but like a, you know, front desk person uh, downtown, maybe, and uh, some grocery store needs a night shift stock person. So, you know, there's still things open, uh, but I want to talk a little bit about novels while I'm thinking about it, because writing novels is hard. Um, I have a few people who uh, I know, friends that are quote-unquote writing novels, um, a couple of them are writing together, you know, as, uh, two people working collab collaboration words, I can do them, uh, but they're planning on, like, a three-book series, and they've been working on it for, for years, uh, you know, almost non-stop, they're pretty obsessed and pretty dedicated to the thing, and they're really good writers, I've worked with them on a couple projects in the past, but, you know, that's their, that's their style, making this universe and rolling around is it half the fun for them, but, I have people who get on my case sometimes about when I'm going to write that award-winning novel. And, uh, you know, I don't have an agent, I don't have a story, I don't have a story proposal, I, uh, I'm terrible at finishing projects, but, uh, y you know, it's, it's not all just sitting down and writing a book. I mean, I guess it is if that's all you really want to do, but the getting published is a little bit harder and getting famous is almost impossible because it's, it's uh, a product, it's a business product, and if it's not marketed right, if it's not funded properly, then no one's going to buy it. So, I mean, there's this whole business side to publishing novels that's really interesting. But, uh, I mean, yeah, because they are, they are products. And, you know, if the author is popular, and their product will be popular, whether or not it's actually that great. And if the product is wonderful and nobody knows about it, it won't sell, and it's unfortunate, but that's just kind of how it is. There are a lot of really good books out there that no one has ever really heard of just because the author isn't well known or, you know, the publishing house didn't feel like funding it, but, uh, you know, every now and then someone will get a good break, but that doesn't, that doesn't happen as often as, you know, it would be nice that it happened, but that's sellable versus publishable, and, you know, Alexis, you just need to go out there and, and make it happen, you know, because nothing's going to happen if you don't write the book, that's the big thing, and, uh, Yep, you just gotta go out and make that a American, great American novel. You can do it. But, uh, Becky, uh, to, you know, kind of lean over to the zoological side of the literature zoological thing, um, the water buffalo is in fact a cape buffalo. Um, I don't feel like getting out of my room and getting into the screenshot of it. But the true wild members of water buffalo are native species of the Indian subcontinent and... Southeast Asia, and the, the they have domesticated species that are kind of all over the world now, but uh, the Cape Buffalo is not really very closely related to that buffalo or to domesticated cattle, just because it has a incredibly unpredictable and dangerous uh, personality. It's known as uh, one of the big five, one of the top five most dangerous animals to hunt in Africa, and they also call it, quote-unquote, the Black Death or the Widowmaker. Um, the animal itself, after it's been killed and, you know, properly uh, dealt with, bush, butchered and, you know, skin and all that. It's sent through customs separately, uh, with a huge mountain of paperwork to make sure everything's legal and in order, and after that it's sent to a taxidermist, and there's probably a How It's Made episode detailing exactly how that works, and if not, then there should be. I think that'd be really interesting. Uh, to talk about, uh, paper towns now. My perception of, my perception is colored because I, I haven't, met anyone yet who doesn't fall into one of two categories regarding John Green, and the first uh, is that they haven't heard of him, and the second is that 
they are obsessed to the point of not being able to look critically at anything he does. Um, I'm just kind of assuming here because they tend not to say why he's great, just that he, uh, that he's really good and they kind of make high-pitched squealing noises while they do it. So, I mean, they really like him, but it's a, like an obsessive kind of like. So my, my, uh, my expectations are really high. Probably unrealistically high and so I am inevitably disappointed just uh, because, you know, I'm expecting a miracle and I just get a really good book instead. And that's, that's terrible, but, you know, that's expectations for you. Uh, I think my favorite part of the book so far has been on the, uh, you know, on the page after the title page with the publishing information right under the copyright it says, uh, the moral rights of the author have been asserted. And, uh, I've never seen such a note before, but I found it delightfully passive and kind of, uh, just, I don't know, a nice touch, I think, from what I know of him, it seems right in line. And also the, uh, the line Quentin has about both my parents are therapists, that line was nice. Margot, so far, has been a little hard to stomach, uh, at this point, just because, uh, I'm tired of seeing her, her her trope and everything, I guess. Alexis is going to laugh at me because once again my problem is that I read too much, but Margot is textbook manic pixie dream girl at this point, and it's it's annoying. It's kind of annoying. Uh, but she also feels a little bit like she's trying to run away from something, and the manic pixie dream girl might be just her way of dealing with it. So I, um, I don't know, spoiler alert, I've heard Paper Towns is more of a deconstruction of that trope than anything. Uh, like, playing with Alaska was playing it straight, and The Fault in Our Stars was playing it straight, gender inverted. But, in any case, that gives me strength that by the end of this she'll come across as something other than a privileged snob and a male fantasy. But, I don't know, I have enough faith in John Green as a writer to expect something like that. Also, something kind of interesting, there was a line somewhere in the book in the first part that we read uh, about average lifespans in the past being like 30 years, and it wasn't really true in the way that she was using it, I don't think. Uh, just kind of an interesting little history thing. Uh, but I, I wrote some notes here on my computer. Uh, but it's... it's like, the, the, the key word there is average, that yes, the, the average lifespan was quite a bit lower than it is now, but that's just because they're including the outrageously high infant mortality rates. So, um, yes, the, the average was much lower, but there's no time in history when being a 25-year-old makes you an old maid. Also, I just want to note that the use of Honey Bunny in the novel, it makes me physically ill. It's, oh, I just really hate that word. Um, what else? Also, I got a new phone. Um, this is from the new phone. Uh, the, the old one was making some kind of weird rattling sound, and, uh, my grandmother's been kind of on my case about getting a new one, upgrading my old phone, upgrading my old phone, uh, as a graduation gift, and, uh, this, this, this was the, her opportunity to do that. So, uh, text me pictures of what you guys are kind of up to in your day-to-day -day life so I can make sure everything is working. Because I, I really don't get texts as much as I used to since we haven't been talking. But, uh, I guess just as one last thing, you see behind me there is my, my personal library. Um, yes, this is the alternate dimension. This new phone actually works in my room dimension, which is really nice <laughs> as far as uh, not disturbing everyone while I'm making these videos. So uh, I guess that's it for today. Hopefully this video will load to YouTube from the phone in less than five hours. Uh, but love you guys. Have a nice weekend. I will see you guys on Monday and Tuesday. Bye!